Okay, so you're probably all aware of these people online making a fuss about the earth actually being flat. No matter what your arguments are, they will find some ways to debunk them, leaving open the possibility the earth is actually flat. There are several problems with a flat, non-spherical earth, which any float brain with an elementary school knowledge of physics can determine. Most of the flat earth arguments come to probability. One where it's incredibly likely the earth is a sphere, but there leaves a small chance the earth is actually flat. The round shadow on the moon is just the earth as a disk, not a square. The gravity is a result of the disk accelerating upwards with 9.81 meters per second. And day and night is just a flipping of that disk. It is as easy to poke holes in the flat earth argument as it is to make a size comparison on YouTube. Flat Earth models will struggle to properly explain the formation of the Earth, the exact workings of plate tectonics, the existence of Earth's magnetic field, seasons, the polar nights, and the maintenance of an atmosphere on a disk. The Earth is an oblate spheroid. If you think otherwise, you are wrong. But that's for the Earth. What about the universe? What is the shape of our universe? Is it a sphere? Perhaps it's a cube. Or perhaps it's butterfly shaped. No, not butterfly shaped. I heard that somewhere. But surely the universe can be flat. Before we can say anything on this, we need to define what exactly the universe is. We mostly think of the universe as a collection of galaxies and matter. But the fabric of the universe is actually the space-time continuum. The field described by Einstein's relativity theory. Gravity is the key force here. Objects with mass have a gravitational pull. Atoms stars, galaxies, and you and me. We don't really know a lot about gravity. If you have seen my video about it, you know it's the most poorly understood force of nature. Gravity reserves the ability to bend and warp spacetime. The best way to view this is to imagine the spacetime as a vast open field. It's not a solid field, but it's an elastic field. The field responds to the presence of mass. If you drop a mass, it bends downwards. If you drop negative mass, it would bend upwards. But let's keep it simple for this video, shall we? In short, the field curves in response to the presence of mass. The curvature increases the gravity around a massive object. Let's say you are a person, which well, in all likelihood you are. Your mass warps the space-time continuum around you, causing a dip. A small mass, like a single electron, causes an insignificantly small dip in the fabric of space. The gravitational field of an electron, though not non-existent, is too small to influence anything in nature. Not even other electrons. When you get to molecules, the gathered mass is big enough to somewhat slide other molecules towards the dip. This progress is called accretion, and is how the first large gatherings of mass happened to form the planets. Planets have a significant mass. The gravitational field of the Earth is so strong, you would need to travel over 11 kilometers per second to escape into space. The more mass you gather in a particular part of space, the more you dip the field, and thus get more gravity. Stars are very concentrated, massive objects. The gravitational field of a star is therefore huge. If you start concentrating the mass, and thus increase the density, the gravitational field goes up even further. White dwarfs, the stellar remnants of the core of red giant, are very dense and have a huge gravitational field. Neutron stars are a step up even further. And black holes, which are arguably the densest mass concentrations in the universe, have such strong gravitational fields, they bend the very workings of physics around them. The space-time continuum, except space, also governs the flow of time, which is also affected by mass. This is actually the mind-boggling part of relativity, as our brains are only used to the normal linear flow of time which we experience here on Earth. This is shortly how the space-time continuum thing works. Now this field can have a curvature. A positive curvature would result in a spherical universe, while a negative curvature would result in a hyperbolic universe. No curvature? means a flat universe. So how can we determine the curvature of the universe? One simple way to do this is draw a triangle. Due to simple math, the angles of a triangle should always add up to 180 degrees. Alpha, beta and gamma together should always be 180 degrees. If you draw a triangle on a flat space that is, 
If the space is not flat, it won't be 180 degrees. If you draw a triangle on an upwards bulge, the triangle will bulge outwards, causing the angles to add up to more than 180 degrees. If it bulges downwards, the triangle will bulge inwards, causing the angles to be less than 180 degrees. And only if the surface is perfectly flat, you get 180 degrees exactly. So to measure the curvature of the universe, we just need to draw a triangle. But not a small triangle on paper. The curvature might be very slight, so you need to draw a really big triangle. Don't even use the stars. Use distant galaxies and draw an intergalactic triangle. Then, add the angles of the triangle. If the number is less than 180 degrees, we live in a negatively curved universe. If it's more than 180 degrees, we live in a positively curved universe. And if it's exactly 180 degrees, the universe will be perfectly flat. The Cosmic Microwave Background This is an afterglow from the Big Bang radiation leftovers from the formation of the universe. When it was mapped, it was found to have fluctuations. The expansion of the universe combined with this fact presents the horizon problem. Due to the fact the universe is expanding, places should in the past have been closer together and fluctuating areas should have been in contact at some point, suggesting a homogenic universe. These fluctuations do provide a drawing frame though. Since we mapped the cosmic microwave background, drawing this giant triangle was easy. The average angular distance between cosmic microwave fluctuations would be 1 degree on a flat universe. If you live on a closed universe, the angular distance between the flux would curve and the average distance would be greater than 1 degree. And if you live in an open hyperbolic universe, the angular distance average would be lesser than 1 degree. So what did we measure? With an accuracy of 15% and an error of 2%, the average angular distance between the cosmic microwave fluctuations was determined to be 1 degrees creating triangles with a total of 180 degrees, indicating a flat universe. But it might be possible the curvature is too small for us to detect. Though, as far as we can tell, the universe is totally flat. The fact the universe is flat seems to be entirely coincidental, and we have the exact right mass energy density for this to happen. Approximately 5 hydrogen atoms per cubic meter. If the universe had been less dense, it would contract into a negative curvature. And if it had been more dense, it would bulge into a positive curvature. But we seem to have the exact right mass energy distribution for this. But you would suspect the density of an expanding universe to not remain constant. But rather, it should fill the extra space made available by the expanding, while the mass remains the same over that time. Like the stretching of the space lowers the density. However, this is wrong, as the universe isn't stretching. The universe is expanding. And the current expansion models allow the expansion of space while the mass energy density remains the same. A closed universe would be massive enough to collapse back in on itself, also known as the Big Crunch. If the universe were open, it would expand forever at an accelerating rate. And if the universe is perfectly flat, it will continue to expand forever, but at an increasingly slower rate. This does not factor in dark energy, an elusive form of hypothetical energy which destroys all that logic by seemingly accelerating the expansion anyways. So how can we have the exact right mass density for this universe to be as flat as the Dutch landscape? It has been mathematically proven that if it had been off even slightly, it would have deviated further over time. It turns out that cosmic inflation itself forces the universe towards a balance point. In our traditional view of universal expansion, the universe grows and the mass gets spread over the new space, making it less and less dense over time. But in the model of cosmic inflation, the universe has a fixed mass density. General relativity suggests a direct relation between the mass, energy density of the universe and its geometry. As space expands, its geometry gets flatter, which after 13.8 billion years of expanding, quickly explains why it is as flat as it is. Due to its expansion, space gets stretched to be flatter, which happens very quickly given the exponential rate of expansion shortly after the Big Bang. This all is why our universe is flat. As I said before, the existence of dark energy troubles this model, and how it fits into this exactly is yet to be determined. 
This still means the universe is flat though. The existence of dark energy just means the inflation model as currently used which should be explained by the geometry of the universe and its mass density has a loose end. The universe being flat has no further direct life implications. But it's fun to know how the universe is flat, just like the Earth. Oh wait.